All okay, right. so let's start. Let's start our life. Our second life this time is uh, we called it building up a good posture, and of course the main subject is uh, posture. And uh, we cannot again solve all the problems in the world, but we would like to touch a few things and uh, talk about some cliches, share with you our experiences. Right. We hope you're gonna like it and you'll find it useful. Right, so what is posture? Let's see why we need good posture in the first place and uh, uh, the importance of posture, why it is so important for a ballroom dancer and particularly for standard dancer from our perspective. So first point uh, for having good posture is basically for standard dancers, uh, it is a necessary, necessary thing. And by posture, we're going to talk about our vertical alignment as well as our frames. So the frame, we, we, we take hold with each other. It is a necessary rule uh, for us standard dancers, obviously, to perform. We cannot go, go out there and uh, obviously dance in open hold and open position. So standard dancers, they have this rule and requirement to have certain look, to have certain position, certain hold in our bodies. So first of all, for standard posture and hold is absolutely a must and it has to be uh, on a certain level in order for us to perform, right? Yeah. So there are different styles like American smooth or Latin and you don't need this kind of frame and hold in those styles. Uh, our our international standard hold is called right now traditional hold in smooth and in Latin no one is using this hold anyways but we for international standard are using it absolutely all the time and if you see couple is dancing and then suddenly getting out of uh, hold then you think there is some problem in that in that couple maybe they're tired maybe they're fighting during the dance but it's definitely not normal so for us it is a requirement. It is a requirement. We can't, can't avoid it. Right. Then we have, uh, we are always uh, judged basically whether by judges themselves or the audience, just the onlooker, by how we look, right? So this is the first impression that we give to the people that look at us and uh, this is our alignment, this is our posture and our position, our hold in dancing. So, Lilia, we are judged by the look. Yes, so we give this first impression on how, um, of how we look like, right? So, the moment we go on the floor, the moment we start uh, moving in the studio as well, um, this is when we give this first impression, so this is when posture is very important. Keep going. All right? Now, uh, next thing that is important that posture gives us, it gives us the functionality, right? Correct. So, um, Function, you can, think, you can think about it from your personal uh, perspective, a balance and stability, this is number one. Now, we, it also influences a lot our coordination. So when we have a good posture, we, we don't have good coordination yet, but at least we have a chance to build up that coordination. Because without good posture, you're just building up you know, bad habits and uh, the coordination is, it just won't be there. Now, as far as mechanics, posture is the, the function of the posture has the mechanical uh, mechanical aspect in it. So when you have when you have a good posture and you're doing certain mechanical things, your range of movement is uh, bigger. For example, if you want to if you want to do rotation with the range as much as possible, you have to have as vertical axis of that rotation as possible. If the axis is not there, you simply cannot rotate as much as if it would be there. So this is just one of the uh, one of the reasons. Now uh, for the couple, I don't know, Lily, if you want to. Talk right, sure. So posture, the correct posture, the correct alignment is important for us to be able to dance together. So for a couple, for our connection with each other, it is important that we have the awareness of all the connection points that we have in standard. How we touch each other, where we touch each other, and what is the functionality of those contact points. Uh, what it gives us, again, through that correct posture, through the correct uh, hold, it gives us the chance uh, to lead and follow from the followers, from the ladies' perspective, or lead or give the information from a uh, leader or gentleman's perspective. So Janelle is asking, how do you maintain the connection throughout the dance? And we are actually going to talk about this just a little bit later. Great question. So please stay with us. I have some positive comments about my sweater. <laughs> Thank you. This was Lilia, Lilia's gift to me on uh, Christmas, and I really, really like it. It's really warm. Now, 
all this posture uh, functionality and the importance of it, it leads to uh, to few things. One of the most important things is uh, when we have problems with our posture, it is very, very time consuming to solve those problems during the practice. And so let's say between uh, between Fighters. us and also during the lesson. So during the practice, you uh, you start talking about those issues with your partner. And then, of course, uh, the more you talk about it, the more you're wasting your time. And uh, there is a higher chance for you to fight with your partner. And I think this is the worst, uh, the worst thing ever. Uh, I remember I was a really a partner from uh, hell for my first partner, Christina. We were dancing together when, uh, when we were very young. We were dancing from juveniles up to amateurs, if I'm, if I'm right. Or like last... Long time, actually. Yeah, very long time. More than seven years. So I was really a partner from hell. I apologized already <laughs> to her. Yeah, they're good friends right now. Actually, so I, right? was, I was obsessed with that posture. Uh, and uh, of course, you know, there were, there were times where we start practicing with our teacher as a, as a teenagers. And I feel and we feel it's so uncomfortable. And we start fighting about the posture and everything like that. So we were giving each other really hard time, especially I was giving her a lot of hard time. Now, if my posture would be correct, we would use that precious time to, uh, to learn and to improve other aspects of our dancing, because there are many other things you can, you can work on. And of course, during the lesson, how many times, how much time do you spend during your lesson, whether it's a pro teacher or you're just a couple taking Coaching. lesson? How much time do you spend on correcting arms one way or another, or your or your vertical yeah. alignment? So your please, itself. please comment from one to ten. On a scale from one to ten, ten is maximum. How much do you? How much time do you spend on it? A lot or or not so much? From our perspective, yes. I remember when we were kids, when we were just learning how to dance, right? And we're still learning, I mean, but when we had more mistakes, let's say, we've spent probably about 80 to 90% at each lesson, 80, 90% of time, think about it. We would spend on just taking the hold with our partners, just putting the connection uh, together, just putting that vertical alignment together, it's just to be able to stand straight to take this hold with a partner. All right, so we have first numbers in <laughs> Emily 8, Jerry 7. <laughs> right. Yeah, so this is... Over quarantine, 8 to 10. 8 to 10. Right, eight. because we're yeah. in limited space, right? So we are really kind of in this um, situation when we have a lot of um, possibilities to work on something like posture when we don't have to move a lot. Now, during the lesson, you spend time on it. Of course, well, we hope you don't fight with your teacher, but... <laughs> Time consuming, therefore, uh, becomes a posture becomes very expensive. So Natasha, Natasha says that before 10, so all the time working on posture, but now she learned it and now it's about it's three. It's a three, yes. great improvement. I think wow. Natasha, Natasha, I, uh, I agree with your comment. I can <laughs> confirm that yes, posture is getting better. So from our personal experience, uh, I would say, especially new people, I think we, we also teach posture like 80% of the time. And right. the problem is that if you don't have correct posture, as we were talking right now about the functionality of it, you simply cannot go to other subjects. So we, we know very few people who had good posture naturally. And of course, it was so easy to teach them. And uh, it, was not, it was not just uh, the difficulty level uh, of, of the learning, learning curve, but it was so fast because we can really skip that second layer and go right away and do all the mechanics and, and, and all the, the fun part. Right. So we were very lucky. I think naturally our posture is okay. Uh, I think maybe mine is a little bit naturally better than Lilia, but Lilia is very good too. Uh, during the last five years, any lesson we're taking, no correction on posture. Can you believe it? Because <laughs> uh, you guys voted that uh, you spend so much time on posture. Uh, will you address differences by dance? For example, tango versus waltz. Mike, what do you exactly mean by the differences? Hold. I think ah, he you means mean the, the hold. hold right? Okay, the hold. 
we can we can talk about it yeah so yeah we we are rarely uh corrected uh on on that really. now yeah but we were many times and as yaroslav has mentioned he was a little bit more likely with his posture because his spine has a little bit less of those natural curves but uh, i'm straight yeah he's quite straight actually his spine but i have been corrected uh for quite a long time and uh I've made my research because there were issues that I couldn't figure out from the lessons I've taken even, uh, or from the questions I would ask even my teachers. When we are talking about posture and hold, uh, we cannot say that there is certain style of taking a hold uh, from our perspective. We, we cannot say that there is English style or Italian style of taking a hold because uh, there is just certain ways the joints bend or they act in a certain way that will create certain shape and certain frame for us to do standard. I think it is uh, uh, one of the things we believe in and one of the core um, statements in our posture uh, lecture today that there is pretty much, there are many ways to do it wrong, but there's pretty much one way to do it uh, right. right. So that frame is going to look good and it's going to be functional and it is going to allow you to uh, communicate with your partner. So and of course, it can be an Italian or Ukrainian style, <laughs> American style of bending the elbow. If you think that <laughs> Ukrainians bend the elbow differently from Italians, uh, then I have bad news for you. It's just all the same stuff. So we have uh, all the same principles applicable to us. Now, uh, one of the things that we, we wanted to point out is that... Uh, don't try to fix posture when it actually doesn't need to be fixed. And this is one of the reasons we come up with, with the methodology, PRISM method, because very, very uh, often, very often uh, we, have, we have problem, there is a mechanical problem. So knowing PRISM method, you know if it's actually a problem with posture or maybe it's mechanics or it's dynamics and then if it's a problem with posture then of course you have to work on posture so we would like to go forward and talk about the main cliches on posture and basically those are the things where we waste our time the most uh you want yes, to start of with, course. with the first? first cliche about squeezing the shoulder blades together so guys please comment how many times please leave us a comment how many times have you heard to squeeze your shoulder blades together in standard for you to have better posture or for you to stand up straighter or have a better uh, frame. How many times have you heard about squeezing the shoulder blades together? Uh, so again, the shoulder blade, if you look at the anatomy of it, if you look at the skeleton naked without any muscles and without anything else but bones, if you look at it, if you take the shoulder blade, it is a part of your arm it is a part of your shoulder joint and it is a part of your humerus so when you are moving your shoulder blade you're actually influencing your arm now your shoulder blade is not really a part of your spine it is not connected with your spine with any kind of bone or joint so in order for us to stand straight actually uh, we have to make sure that our spine is relatively straight as much as it can be straight but we cannot fix our spine with um, moving the shoulder blade. So the first cliche is to squeeze shoulder blades backwards to in order to get straighter. And we are telling you that's not a solution because to, to be straighter means to do something with our spine and has nothing to do with our shoulder blades. Right. And we can move to yeah, the we're second. going to move on to the second cliche. And guys, if you heard some of those cliches before, please leave us a comment or if you think you have another cliche for us that you would want to discuss, please uh, comment that as well. So another cliche that we hear that other people teach or we hear from our students that they have this kind of um, perception. perception or misconception in their mind from their previous trainer. Uh, that, uh, hi, thank you so much. So uh, another cliche would be to uh, press the shoulders down or all together with those shoulder blades, press them down and roll them back. So something like that, again, for to good fix posture. To fix what? <clears throat> to fix that same thoracic curve. Yeah, but very <clears throat> often we also <clears throat> say it because your, your one shoulder is sticking up, then we have to press it and uh, put it down. So now, 
to uh, if we are going, if we are going, I don't know. If you want to start, you can start. I know Lila. She she. I'm really, really excited yeah, about those she's cliches. She's really excited about this one. Uh, yeah, so when we hear that, why we hear that. So if you ever heard that your shoulders are popping up, again, let us know. When we hear that, there, there is a number of issues. So we can have our shoulders up, popping up uh, for uh, first that our first reason that our shoulder joint is lifted and we have to know why it is being lifted and uh, the bone that is important here. Yeah, I think uh, I think we have to uh... We have to finally, all the dancers, we have to finally discover that bone that is really responsible for all of those problems and actually for the solutions as well. <clears throat> and the bone is clavicle or the color bone. So there are many things that we have to fix with our clavicle bone, but not with the shoulder joint and not definitely not with the, with the shoulder blade. So now, if you have your shoulder as a shoulder lifted it's your clavicle bone that that lifts it it's not the shoulder blade that lifts it and of course the shoulder joint has very uh has very little to to do with it so first we discovered the clavicle bone now emily on instagram and the instagram connection is good today she's asking a really good question what causes the shoulder to pop up million dollar question so we, we number will of reasons yeah, right number of reasons one of the very popular reason is, and again, this is in the posture uh, layer, uh, you get to the position and then uh, people are saying you have to curve to the left, which is not, not really true. So now, as I'm curving to the left, I have to, yeah, as I'm curving to, <laughs> to, the, the, to the as left. I'm curving to the left, basically I'm kind of swaying to the left. And then what happens is, as I'm, I have a fixed point here, I'm swaying to the left, then I have the shoulder pops up. So to fix it is actually really, really important, uh, really, really easy. You don't have to curve to the left. You have to curve forward and backwards through the frontal plane or sagittal plane, right? Yes. Yeah, this so, would be the first thing that you want to fix, especially from the lady's perspective, yeah. because since we have this connection point in our hand, right hand for the ladies, and when we are trying to curve to the left or sway or incline away from that fixed point, this is when our right shoulder is very easy to pop up. Now, another thing actually that I can say from the ladies' perspective, if your left shoulder is popping up, this is very interesting because it is a different connection on the left side. So when your left shoulder is popping up, or for gentlemen, when their right shoulder is popping up, um, this is when our elbows are simply behind our bodies. Yeah. So remember that cliche about the shoulder blades that we've just discovered, right? That we just discussed. Whenever our shoulder blades are being squeezed together, the shoulder blade as a part of the arm is bringing the whole arm back. I think I can do it. <laughs> if Yaroslav I can, can do show it. it. Right here, if I move my clavicle, sorry. If I move my clavicle forward, I can pick up through the shoulder joint. If I move it backwards and I pick up and you can see how my elbow is behind my back. So now I simply cannot... Uh, lift it as, as high as, uh, as, as needed. So when the elbow is behind, it can only lift certain amount. When it is in front, it can lift properly inside that socket. So your whole humerus is lifted together with your elbow uh, to the right amount. Whenever it's behind, it has a limit how much it can lift. Have, Therefore, yeah. the elbow is visually much lower than the shoulder. And the more you're trying to pick up your elbow, the more you will move your whole socket and the whole shoulder upwards. So I, I hope we answered Emily's question. And uh, again, you want to discover that clavicle bone that, bone that Yaroslav has mentioned earlier. And you want to see that you are not lifting the whole shoulder joint with that clavicle so that your clavicle stays more or less parallel to the floor. So that is going to be your reference point. Of course, guys, right now we're doing our best, but we are in sweaters and a lot of, uh, a lot of clothes and a lot of layers of clothes because it's cold. Uh, now, when, when we were doing our posture layer course of PRISM method, there is, it is available on our website. Uh, we have discovered the software where we have a 3D skeleton of the, of the body and we were able to move that skeleton left and right any direction. So in the skeleton and in our course, you can clearly see the bones and joints that are responsible for those movements for the posture. So I think the, the visual part is very, very clear. At least, you know, 
as we were preparing the course, I thought, wow, if I would be, you know, very young and somebody would show me this skeleton, I think the information would go through much uh, faster and much easier for me. So we have prepared that, we discovered that software, we recorded the course. If anyone is interested, you can, you know, you can go on our website, check out, check out the course. It's not free, but the information in there is uh, basically based on, you know, science. It is a knowledge that you can come back to anytime. The course is available forever if, you know, if you purchased it. And you can always go there and... Uh, and and check if you're doing everything yeah come back to it yeah when we were discuss when we discovered that software it was really exciting for us to move that skeleton because you can literally move every joint and you can see how much uh, it gives you the information how much range that exact joint has so for example if uh, you cannot move that clavicle um, further than a certain degree you basically wouldn't be able to move it in your body uh, so it was really really exciting for us to see exactly how many degrees you can move certain joint and which planes of movement are involved in those joints and particularly excited exciting to put that skeleton in the ballroom dance position uh, talking about posture what you need to understand is that the precision is very very important it's everything and then once you know once you know it it's actually really hard to make a mistake in posture and really hard to do the arms the wrong way because there are angles and you know there are joints that are involved and you can't really change it. So in a way, it's a very, very precise, but once, once you uh, got the idea, it's really hard to do it wrong. And again, as Lilia mentioned earlier, it's only one way to do it right, many ways to do it wrong. So once you got it right, you got it right. You have to recheck yourself, reset a few things, but you will be, you know, we are confident. You can nail it. Correct. You nailed it and it's going to be there. Yeah. So Emily is asking, so you are saying that if a lady is more forward in frontal plane, in more of dynamic balance, it is less likely that her right shoulder will pop up. Correct. So, yes. Yeah. And we are only in dynamic balance because if we are in static balance, we are standing on, on one spot. Actually, the whole point of uh, having a good posture is to get out of static balance and start moving the, the right way. You don't want to just stay there statically. Right, so Emily, your question is clearly about the curve that we create. So this is the dynamic balance in a way that we are creating the curve with. So yes, uh, it is uh, in our course, in our curve lecture, that um, is more uh, valuable even for ladies, I think. Uh, yes, and we're saying that the more sway to the left you are doing, uh, in your setup, in your posture, we're not talking this way that you are using for your natural turn, for example, for your uh, mechanic, uh, mechanics and uh, swing dance movement. We're talking about just the setup. If you are swaying against the fixed point or away from the fixed point, you will have your shoulder popping up. And there is actually no sway in the uh, in setup, in, in the a, posture. Yeah. yeah, there is zero sway. Sway can only balance our movement. Posture, we're talking about, we're not moving just yet. We're setting up and then we're starting to move. That's right. Yeah. Uh, please, guys, comment about uh, what kind of cliches and what are the popular mistakes in posture you often uh, hear. And also, I would like just to say that Mike, he asked about tango and uh, waltz. And uh, for, the, for the man, for example, tango and waltz, it's just a matter of different alignment of our right hand. Uh, it does not influence our spine in, in any way. And of course, there is a little bit of different, a difference in how we rotate our ribcage in tango. Neutral position is a little bit more to the left. We also have it in our course in, <laughs> in case you're in, interested. But yeah, basically, it's just about the, uh, the, the right hand. And it's all uh, the reference point is our connection point with the lady. So her left side and my, uh, my right side, right hand. If we get it right, then the difference is main difference, right hand. Left hand, slight difference, but, but biomechanically, it's uh, approximately the, the same angle. Approximately and, I know, and I know you know it. And uh, you've been taking lessons with an expert as well. So <laughs> I'm sure you know all the information, just a matter of uh, practicing it. it. Yeah. Someone is saying that stomach tucked in, that's what... 
uh, they've heard from their teachers. So stomach tucked in is actually something to do with our abdominal muscles, I believe. So and this vertical is vertical alignment. And yes, those abdominal muscles that are uh, engaged, our center is engaged. That's another another cliche. Hold your center, tuck your center in, right? So yes, this is something for us to think of as a tone in our body as an engagement in those abdominal muscles for us to preserve the posture. So whenever you are wiggling in a way, yeah, or whenever your vertical alignment is not precise, if you have your spine um, not curved, but in a way broken in, in some uh, blocks of weight, some blocks of your body, part, uh, body parts are not aligned, that is when uh, you're going to hear that probably your stomach is uh, pushing forward or something like that. So they ask you to tuck it in. I would like to uh, to go to another cliche and I really want to want to speak about this one. So another one that I often correct when I'm teaching uh, pro-am lady uh, dancers. So they've been taught at some point of their career. Of course, I'm not their first teacher. So therefore I have to deal with a lot of uh, re relearning, uh, let's say. So curve from the sternum or from this breastbone that we have in here. And from I think the rib cage area. from the ribcage area, especially in front. So I don't want to say why, like where the misunderstanding is. I just want to say that uh, anatomically, it's absolutely impossible to curve anywhere from our ribcage. And especially the, the thoracic uh, kyphosis that we have on the back. So everywhere we have ribs, and we have spine in there. If you can imagine our uh, our rib cage, it's very preserved, and that area cannot bend at all. Whether it's thoracic kyphosis on our back or or this area on the, the front, breast bone. the breastbone area, you really can't curve uh, biologically, anatomically. So our our rib cage is. Uh, our rib cage is preserved that way to keep our internal organs safe and especially heart, lungs and all the vital organs. So you can ask any, any doctor even, you, you don't need to be a dancer to, you know, to fix this. It's impossible. So therefore, the question is, uh, when you're curving... Polina says that we kind of can... Yeah, so Polina, uh, Polina is our friend from Moscow, and she's a doctor. And then she says... She used to be a great dancer. You can, but <laughs> you'll get in trouble. It's like you can bend your knee the other way around, but uh, just once in your life. It's a dark, dark humor. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Polina, correct me if I'm wrong, but our bones, uh, they contain collagen. And uh, this is, as far as we have the collagen, it's a little bit flexible. The bone is a little bit flexible itself and again if we have some some physical damage then the bone can rebound a little bit but to do the the dance hold and to there curve, is not much range let's yeah the, the range we're talking <laughs> micro micro uh, range but you can curve from from that area now the question arises is how the hell <laughs> do we curve so we curve the area underneath the yeah you we, the muscles right we we curve basically the area underneath your uh, rib cage. So the, the vertebras that are right under the rib cage, few of them. And again, when we're talking about the vertebras, we imagine that the rib cage is in front and the, the spine is at our back. If we're, if we're looking sideways, for example, from here, here are my ribs and this is my spine. So the area under the ribs, the lower back area, basically, this is the area that is more flexible. There is more flexible, yeah. Now, the sequence is really important because, of course, I'm standing straight. I'm not curving from the ankle or anything like that. And I'm just doing, you know, something like that. I'm, I'm back weighted and I have a lot of pressure on my lower back area. So it all goes with the sequence. But you see how we're talking about this and we went really far away from uh, the breast from, bone. Yeah, from the breast the bone. We're not talking about this area at all. If there is anything to talk about, it's the under the rib cage, the the lower back area here on the you know on our on our back. So this is a cliche we've been correcting for years, and uh, we keep hearing it from other people, from students, from uh, some teachers. You know, we teach with uh, at the studios, and it would be really cool if we just fix it and we stop wasting our time um, on it. 
So yes, we have some comments on Instagram. Thank you for uh, your feedback, guys. Hi, Deborah. So, Emily, we've had some comments actually earlier that were um, interesting that uh, we cannot bend, but we can sure break the ribs. <laughs> Right. We, are not, we don't want to <laughs> break, wanna go there, right? break the ribs or anything, yeah. We want to dance safely. So Emily says, when lady moves into dance position, do you recommend that she rotates slightly to the right? Another cliche, actually. Yeah. Yes. I don't know if Lilia wants to, wants to answer, answer that. Uh, where do I start? <laughs> well, there is a, like a 99% chance that you don't need to rotate. You just have to be parallel with your partner. Sometimes, if you have some... So this 1% chance is... If you have some really strange height relation with your partner, you are, you know, too skinny for him or you're too big for him or for, well, I'm, I'm talking Emily, uh, us from the ladies, ladies point of view. Yeah. Right? So I'm talking about, you know, the man is wrong right now. He's too big, too small, too skinny, too fat, you know, something wrong with him. Then you <laughs> maybe need to have, there is this 1% chance of the, that you need some adjustment. adjustment. Normally, if there, if everything is just normal, and I know, you know, Emily, for you, you have very uh, good relationship, very good match, match uh, with yeah. the, with the Sergey, his great teacher and partner for you. So I don't think, you know, I don't think that's uh, much needed. But you know, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna give those uh, again the rotation to the right inside the setup inside the position that we take before we start moving is also a big cliche. In other words, this is called left side forward, left shoulder blade forward, and all those words you have probably heard a million of times. So uh, there is a higher chance to start swaying to the left that we've discussed earlier and uh, rotating away from the partner to the left in the position that we take that therefore will lead to the correction for you to rotate to the right. But you have to make sure that you define the correction from the principle or from the rule. So we believe that in, in the setup, while you take the position, you do not need to rotate yet before you start moving. So we rotate when we start moving for us to change the direction. So when we take the hold, we do not, we do not need to rotate unless it is a correction. If you have turned to the left, if you have Too rotated much. away, you will here rotate to the right to bring you back to neutral uh, position for you to start dancing. And again, knowing uh, Pris method, uh, you know if it's a correction or it's not a correction. It is actually the knowledge that you will be using all the time. Guys, we, we wanna, Facebook people, we know that the connection was not really good recently, but please, uh, please comment the other cliches that, that you've heard as we're going through some that, that we have prepared for you yes, already. Yes, Emily is asking again, we, I've heard a million times, keep the left side forward at all times. Do you consider that a cliche? It you, is, but we are going is. more to the to the mechanical level uh, here, actually. I, uh, for posture, yes, sometimes some people are saying the left side forward and uh, this is like a domino effect. So you, yes, have, yes. you have one problem, another problem, then you hear the, the left Clearly, side. Clearly, if you hear it right away before you even started to move, it is a posture layer. So if you hear it right away before you take the preparation step, uh, you must check that you're not swaying to the left, that you're not rotating to the left, neither to the left, not to the right, that your shoulder blades are not squeezed together, coming back to that cliche, because what is the left side, basically? When the man is touching that left shoulder blade of yours, he only feels the shoulder blade. He doesn't touch the waist area or the rib cage area. He would only feel if your shoulder blade is rotating or squeezing uh, down, right? So he will only feel if the shoulder blade is not in place. So you have to check that you're not squeezing the shoulder blade back, that you're actually doing the right thing with your shoulder blade and your clavicle, and uh, that uh, you are not rotating away from him in the first place. So if you do hear that before you start moving, it is a posture level. Now, talking about the posture, we also go into another cliche. We also hear quite often that uh, you have to stretch something. And again, uh, when we... So, what we recommend you guys is uh, keep your focus on bones and joints. This is one of the advices I, I have received from some people years ago, and it made my life so much easier. Uh, when you talk about joints and bones you have lesser of uh, things to take care of than if you talk about muscles because there are much more, uh, many more muscles than, than, than bones. 
So we're, we're talking about thousands and thousands of different muscles and there are only that many bones and especially even few in our body and even fewer of them are involved in our uh, ballroom dance uh, posture. So bones are just more simple way to uh, to organize everything. So therefore, if you hear a stretch or pull or anything like stretch that, stretch your elbows, stretch yeah. your arms, stretch your arms, stretch your cliche, uh, right? stretch your chest or anything like that. Yeah, so our vertical up. alignment is quite clear, and we have to keep, you know, all the main body parts on top of one another before we start curving. So if you do it correctly, you actually don't need to feel any stretch. Our muscle can only contract, and if it's not contracted, basically it starts. Uh, you know, it's neutral or if it's the antagonist muscle, you know, one is contracted and another one is stretching. So if you're stretching, for sure you're contracting, contracting something. something. You, you might want to check uh, the muscle you're contracting then, you know, are you doing a good job? Do you need to contract the muscle while just standing and keeping the posture? So you can defi definitely muscles are being used, especially when we are moving and we have different uh, body actions, but this is more mechanical layer. Yeah, but for the posture, if you are stretching or contracting something just to get to the posture, you might want to check that one. I think the only, the only muscles, the only area that, uh, that can be involved just in the posture, abdominal muscles. So that are the ones or our center. We hear center, center. very often as well. Those are the muscles that uh, you want to engage and, and keep in tone even while statically standing. Other than that, I think it might be, you know, might be some uh, misunderstanding. We have right. some other So we questions. have a question. What do you feel is the number one most important feature of posture? Spine or curve, shoulders or arms, base, something else? Is it different for a lady or man? This I is think, a great question. Yeah, great question. For lady and man, should be the same. And I think uh, the... Almost the same. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the, the importance. The importance, yeah. yes. Totally the same. So we build, for example, our course, we have five, uh, five videos, five lectures. And uh, I think the way we build it will really answer this question. Right. Because the yes. first and the most important one would be vertical alignment and how we, how we build up this vertical position with our body. Then the second one would be poise. And again, poise and posture and a poise and vertical line, there is difference in, uh, in it. It's not the same. So that would be the second one. Then the way we built our course, it was then ladies hold arms, men's hold arms. So then you'd once you have the vertical line, then you think about horizontal line, how, you know, how you build up your horizontal the line hold. correctly, the hold. And then the last video that we have, the fifth video is connection points. So we have five connection points. And this is how after being correct individually, you connect with your partner. So this is the, this is the this sequence. Is... That's the importance. I hope I answered that. That question, I hope I understood it, uh, you know. I think clearly. every every uh, stage here, every step uh, on the way to the good hold is important. But of course, yes, starting with personal balance and understanding the awareness of your spine, the awareness of how you create that curve. Because uh, most people, they go today for the biggest shape, the biggest curve possible. And uh, uh, in this curve, they're sacrificing their personal balance or they would sacrifice uh, the connection, the sensitivity through connection points. So sometimes understanding how you build the curve would be uh, also very important. So all these, all these steps that Yaroslav has just mentioned, uh, that all the lessons that we have recorded in our course are important, uh, I would say equally. Especially the arms. For me, my first and my most important, my, my most favorite lesson, I think it's on arms. Because uh, in our career, we didn't have uh, that many teachers that would teach us precise information on arms from the anatomy point of way. Uh, someone says, very insightful information. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, uh, if you agree with me, right? Uh, there are not many teachers who taught us how to build the arms. Well, but we were, again, we were lucky enough, we had few we experts had few. and then they really fixed it. And so. we made a lot of research on our side from the anatomy and biomechanics point of view. 
So that, that is the most, for me, this is my favorite lecture or lesson in our course that uh, we have a step-by-step -step explanation how we build that posture using every joint in our arm and uh, the plane of movement, the degree of movement uh, that is quite precise actually, uh, instruction, step-by-step -step instruction. Again, once you have the posture, you can start thinking about, you know, your movement and how you move together and you can go on more on mechanical level. And uh, we would feel really bad if, if you guys stuck on the posture and then, you, you know, you dance forever for a few years. You, you can still correct the posture here and there. We all, we all need the reset in, in, in some tune sense. In. Yeah, tune in. But uh, you don't want to work forever on those shoulders sticking out and everything because there are so many other things that you can work on. Musicality, dynamics, uh, more fun things to work on rather yeah. than being, uh, you know, obsessed with those shoulders and still trying to figure out the curve and everything. We want so, you to nail it and move on to the personalization as fast as possible. If you have more <laughs> questions, please ask them. And we are, we are curious what kind of problems do you guys have, the ones that are watching us from the internet. And uh, we, we really wanted to uh, solve problems of other people when we were creating our course. So therefore, again, we based it not on corrections, but we actually based it, of course, on dance technique knowledge and on some... Uh, anatomical biomechanical principles that are involved and uh, again when when i discovered when i discovered the 3d skeleton i thought this is really a blessing because now it's visually so clear about uh, so clear how we can fix our things Polina is asking which books did you base your research on Basically, we were just researching everything on anatomy and how the how the joints are working. I cannot refer to. Well, we also book. I have to say that <laughs> we finished the University of Physical Education and Sport. So for you know for number of for number of years we were studying those uh, those sciences and of course the sciences in general. But then if you start thinking about you know I have to pick up I have to pick up the arm and. Uh, what are the muscles involved there? And then when you hear from the professor, there is one muscle, but then your dance teacher tells you there is a completely different muscle, then you have to make a choice whether you listen more to the professor or you listen more to the dance teacher. Of course, we have to respect both, but then if there is a muscle that picks up my humerus up, that's it. You That's can't really, yeah, you can't really negotiate that. So for example, again, I was a teenager and I used to hear a lot that there is some mysterious muscle under my shoulder blade. Uh, even up to this moment, I, I don't understand what muscle that, that was. So the mysterious muscle under my shoulder blade lifts up my arm. And then the next thing I know is that it's, it's a deltoid in here that, that lifts up my arm if we're talking about the muscle. So now I'm thinking, well, what should I do? Because the science tells me the deltoids and then uh, some other teacher tells me it's under the shoulder blade, somewhere deep inside there is a, there is a muscle. So this is the, the choice we're all making. But our point is that in our course, we were really uh, uh, trying to be very precise and we use the science and of course the dance technique to, to build up the correct frame and everything. And by saying the, the dance technique, I mean our our traditional ballroom hold more than anything else. Right. Polina is saying biomechanics in particular. We do actually have a book on biomechanics. I wouldn't remember the author right now, but as soon as we're back home, I can send you the cover, the picture of the cover. And um, someone is asking, should, we, uh, should there be tension in the frame? Janet is asking. Should there be tension in the frame? So again, um, as Yaroslav has mentioned, there are certain muscles that will contract. For example, as deltoid would lift our humerus up, you will feel that this muscle is engaged, for example. You can, by the way, feel it right away. If you hold yourself here, just please do it, <laughs> do it with us. Hold yourself here. I'm doing the hypnosis. And start lifting a little bit. You feel the contraction right away. If you hold yourself somewhere here, and you start lifting. Absolutely nothing is going on in this area. It just, I mean, it just, or, you know, you hold your neck and you start lifting nothing in your neck. So it, it, th those kind of things are very obvious. If you're a normal person and we believe you are, 
it's gonna be very easy to uh, to feel the so, yes, difference. Yes, Emily says that I thought it was the lat that lifted the arm. Uh, that's that's I think that that could be another cliche actually, right? Uh, in dancing, yeah. So we we do we do uh, believe it is a deltoid that does lift that arm inside the socket, and probably Polina can help us on that. <laughs> can back us up. When we talk, you know, guys, when we're telling you the so deltoid, the tension, for example, right? uh, mm -hmm. you know, there are groups of muscles always that are that are working, but we really are focusing on the main, you know, the main muscle. What is our main focus as a dancer? Because you can think about everything. And all the muscles, it's, it's thousands do, yeah. of, of them. So what is the main muscle that is involved? Here, it's a deltoid. Everything else is, you know, it's either could be wrong or could be small non-essential muscle that we don't have to worry about so much. Yes, and Yar as Yaroslav mentioned, in our, in our system, in our course, we do focus on joints and bones mainly, so that uh, the muscles are then moving those bones in a way automatically in your body. As soon as you're aware of that bone and of that joint working, you have those antagonist protagonist muscles that are doing their job they're they're working for our bones to move in a certain way uh, tension in tension, the frame right? another i think million dollar question so uh it should be i like this uh, saying when uh, somebody said as much as needed as less, less as, possible. as possible and i think that's really the i hope i'm not too vague in it uh, that's really the uh, the answer so that's why we really need to know which muscles are involved. With all the muscles, we try to involve only them. And I believe in this way, it will be really as much as needed, as less as possible. If you pick up your arms and you need to, I don't know, do a foot pressure to do it, or you feel, you know, your legs are involved in lifting your arms. I don't know, maybe somebody is sitting on your, on your shoulders or something. So you really have to, you know, yeah, be that, precise uh, with it. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say there's there's tension when you are lifting your arms up. In, and you don't want to have tension because again, if you have tension, your mind is focused on that. You want to uh, dance without any any tension, any distortion for your mind, and uh, be focused on on the on process of of dancing actually, and uh, getting the the joy of dance. Yeah, Polina is saying that regarding the actual sideway lifting and frontal plane, it's deltoid. And uh, supraspinatus, <laughs> another yeah. muscle. Well, thank you, Polina. This is even deeper, deeper explanation. We appreciate. By the way, guys, follow Polina, and then <laughs> if you she's... have, if you have questions, just just ask her. Right. Yeah, she's a dancer, and she's also a um, doctor. Correct me if if I'm saying it wrong, Polina. All right. So again, focusing on those joints and bones will allow you to build up the good posture and allow you to build up a good frame tone but not tension that's right emily yeah Would emily that's for sure i think tone is a much better word than uh, than attention right so guys we we are very excited that you all uh, joined us today and actually we have a lot of people there were some problems with our facebook live and we will upload the video on facebook so you can watch it again but uh, we, we see the numbers already, more, more people joined and actually more people on Instagram joined because you guys mi time. migrated from, from Facebook, which is great to have that option actually, because if we only have Facebook, it doesn't work, then we are a little bit in, uh, in trouble. Uh, we hope we answered your, uh, some of your questions and it was really fun to, uh, you know, to do this lecture for you. We will definitely announce our next Facebook Live for March because we want to do it every month. So we, yeah. we, were, we, we are doing the second one. The first one was in January. Uh, it was about organizing your dance knowledge where we of course uh, hope you can join our PRIS method and you can learn with more clarity. And then of course, if you guys are interested in, uh, in our posture layer, it is uh, available on our website. Uh, I just want to, explain briefly in case you're interested how to log in and everything because it's very new to us and to everybody with this crazy uh with these crazy times so some people who purchased the course they already asked they were asking me before how you can really do it so the the button is right there on the you know the front page that to access the course and then all you need to do is you need to register to log in 
to make a payment and then once you made the payment then you can go to virtual you should be logged in you go to virtual then studio posture layer it becomes available for you and those videos they are available forever so you can you cannot download them uh please don't try don't cheat okay it's gonna stay on the website you can access it anytime you have internet you can access the course uh, we will keep it there uh we really tried to use all our uh to use all our knowledge in there and actually all the tools available as far as vi vi visual, visual visual effects so those skeletons i don't think you can find them anywhere else we don't know anyone who uh, who did it actually before us otherwise we wouldn't come up with this course yeah so all the visual stuff is really really cleared in there and of course briefly we already introduced you to you know what's in there there are five lectures vertical alignment uh, poise gentleman's arms ladies arms and f and connection five connection points. points and if you have the course you can send you can do a little homework send us video of you taking the position then you will get 30 minutes free with us online or actually some people purchase the course and they say well we have we purchased the course but we have a lesson with you so can we use those 30 minutes and the answer is yes you can if you have the course you have 30 minutes for free if you see us next time in the studio we will just you know talk about your posture and make all the corrections yeah the great thing about this course is that it is interactive that you can actually send send your video send that homework and we can give you the feedback on it or answer any of your questions because uh, you might have some questions on posture or on prismatic in general and of course if you haven't subscribed to our website for free please do it because we are uh, our mailing list actually is growing we have quite a, a lot of people right now well we started from zero so of course <laughs> yeah you can subscribe to our website it only takes a, an email and uh, we are working on a lot of exciting projects we are uh, filming a lot of uh, exciting stuff for you and um, hopefully you can stay in touch and receive those news first and we want to say Dima Nikolaev if he watches us our our uh, videographer uh, the the person who is behind the camera i think he is doing a really good job and the the quality of the videos are great yes. and the sound and everything yes if there is a problem with the sound it's the way i actually talk in english <laughs> that's that's the big problem but i'm working on it right thank you so much this was great thanks i'm studying sport medicine and this knowledge is so helpful it is great that you do that totally apply it to your dancing and it will be so much more efficient yeah and of course you know Sport medicine, uh, again, we finished, we're bachelors in uh, physical education and sport as well. With the respect, but you definitely have to question the knowledge that seems uh, strange for you. Again, as far as all the muscles and joints. Guys, thank you so much. We really, really thank appreciate you. your support. It was really fun and we hope to see you back in March where we will be doing our next live. I think it will be something about mechanics. But we'll see how it goes also with the posture, because we can always do posture layer number two or, or something like that. Thank you for staying with us. Thank we you for staying with us. Soon. Yeah, we will upload the video right away, uh, right now on Facebook. Bye-bye.